countdown to off-cycle elections in Bayelsa, Imo, and Kogi states. And federal government suspends empower, props disbursement of funds. I am Bola Hoba and this is Plus Politics. Three days to the gubernatorial elections in Kogi, Bayelsa, and Imo states, Nigeria's Electoral Commission, INEC, has reported that only 55% of the 189,180 total list of polling unit and collection center agents has been uploaded by political parties. INEC has called on political parties participating in the November 11 governorship elections in Bayelsa, Imo, and Kogi states to upload the list of their polling unit and collection center agents before the deadline, which is tomorrow. All 18 political parties are fielding candidates in Kogi state, 17 in Imo state, and 16 in Bayelsa state. The list also shows that two political parties are fielding female candidates in Bayelsa State, one in Kogi State, and none in Imo State. In preparation for the forthcoming elections, the Commission has approved the resumption of collection of permanent voters' cards, PVCs, for registered voters who could not collect their PVCs before the last general elections, and also urged political parties and their candidates to refrain from acts and statements that could inflame the political climate. The off-cycle elections for the three states will be held on November 11, 2023. Counting down with me and analyzing the forthcoming elections, is Paul James, Program Manager, Election, Yaga, Africa. Paul, pleasure to have you guesting on Plus Politics this evening. Thank uh, you very much for the invitation. Good evening. Pleasure is all ours. Paul, the primary reason for inviting you is to stimulate public enlightenment, especially on electioneering matters. But it will be a wasted opportunity if one is engaging with somebody like you from a reputable organization uh, such as Yaga, not to do a cursory, a cursory review of the last general elections. What would you say synoptically are uh, your take of the last general elections, February presidential and the March gubernatorial, or general across the board. What would be your take? Well, I like the way you are putting me on the spot, especially as I know most stakeholders, the usual style is once one election cycle is over, we quickly want to just run and begin to talk about the next cycle. But I quite agree with you that we cannot be talking about the coming election uh, without reflecting back to see how each of these stakeholders fared, especially in the uh, February and March 18, 2023, uh, March 18, 2023 elections. Now, um, I know a lot of INEC has been in the spotlight for a number of reasons, right, rightly so, especially because that there was expectations before the elections, and perhaps we could say there are also unmet expectations. A lot of stakeholders for the elections 
had high, high hopes that INEC was going to deliver the, uh, the election that, uh, will, uh, uh, that Nigerians will want, the election that Nigerians will expect. Of course, we saw the turnout, and it also depends on the lenses that individuals or stakeholders will want to be looking at the elections from. This is because there was a commitment or a promise by the Independent the National Electoral Commission before the election, especially to deepen the use of technology. And we saw how that played out in the election, especially for the presidential election. There was an attempt, of course, uh, in the March 18 election by the commission to some extent to redeem itself. Now, technology was not just the only con concern from that election. There was also concern around how the commission had managed the logistics for the election. That was the election on, uh, I mean, the election on, on, on February the, the uh, 20, 22nd, uh, 25th, rather, where we saw in some parts of the country, especially in the southeast and the south southern part of the country, that to a large extent, the commission deployed late. And so, again, which raises a lot of concerns, especially if you connect that with uh, issues around voter suppression. We had, at the Aga Africa, our reports indicated only 10% of polling stations had opened by 9.30 across most of the polling units in the southeast geopolitical zone. And then only 22% of polling stations, uh, polling units had opened uh, by 9.30 uh, at most of the polling stations in the south south geopolitical zone. So with those sort of concerns in mind, of course, stakeholders will expect that the commission will uh, do better, that the commission had learned from its lesson. But most of uh, uh, the major concern also from that election was the part that the public communication by the commission at some point and was not as expected, especially when the commission was having issues, especially in managing its logistics and in managing the technology that it deployed for the nation. So we expected that the commission would have been upfront, that the commission would have helped to manage those expectations. We don't expect that this commission are people that are operating from outside of our own space. To a large extent, we understand the circumstances or the challenges around which the commission conducted the election. If you recall, there were concerns around the scarcity of, uh, I mean, I, 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 uh, there was this uh, policy oh, that didn't go down well with Nigeria, the policy around access to cash. There was also some, to a large extent, concerns around even access to petroleum products. The commission had assured Nigeria that it was in communication with the Central Bank of Nigeria and also in communication with the petroleum marketers to ensure that it had access to cash and also that it was able to get uh, a petrol to be able to deploy to the polling units in time. Especially if you think that logistics around our elections are cash paid, even for security to deploy to a large extent, they will need to assess, uh, 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 they will need to assess cash. Those were the things that played out. And then uh, between March to this moment that the election had happened, uh, to, uh, I mean, there are also concerns about the public public posture of the commission. You wanted the commission, we want to see the commission to be more assuring, the commission to be more engagement, to be more upfront in the way and manner it approached concerns around election, but also how it also engaged with the voting public. But then here we are, just barely 30 days or so to the elections, also the first uh, cycle, uh, all cycle elections in Kogi, Bayasa and, uh, and uh, uh, Bayasa and Imo, and then I wouldn't say that uh, uh, I wouldn't. I mean, while the commission had a checklist of what it wanted to do before the election, I, it is gradually taking off what it has achieved on the checklist. I think concerns still remain, especially around public engagement. If this is a good time to say this, I was in uh, Imo some two weeks ago, precisely on the 15th of September where we had expected to engage with the commission. We sent a request to the commission to come and speak with some of our observers that we had deployed as long-term observers to oversee the pre-election process in Imo State. The commission declined the invitation, simply uh, that uh, they had suffered embarrassment, that, uh, that uh, people had often attacked them each time they attack, uh, attempt public functions in Imo, uh, Imo especially. So, that is for us a big concern heading into the election that if there is no sort of assurance, especially about the safety and security of the commission, and also if the public still doesn't have that confidence that the commission is going to manage the election in a way or manner that we expect, then I think uh, we are yet to cross that hurdle.
Okay, uh, I can understand the fact that uh, people in your shoes will feel somewhat, uh, somewhat disappointed that INEC may not be the, INEC may not be engaging as robustly or vibrantly as you would want. Uh, some of us too have noticed that subsequent to uh, the last general elections, INEC seemed to have. Uh, been a bit withdrawn. I wouldn't know the last time I even saw the picture of the chairman of INEC attending any public function. But uh, as it is now, it is the constitutional inevitability that elections must take place in Imo, in Bayelsa, and in Kogi. And it is imperative, too, that INEC and responsible organizations such as Yaga Africa Situation Room and most of uh, most of this uh, most of uh, of you people who go around uh, enlightening uh, the public on the electionary matters must do what you have to do, uh, and that is why we have invited you here today. So, where do we start from, methodically, chronologically, uh, about enlightening our, our public with a view to how they should conduct themselves? what they need to know, what they should uh, what they should have done on or before the date of the election, during the election. We may not have all the time in the world to do that, but I just want to give it to you. This is rolling you the ball. And let's go about it chronologically as best as you can and as uh, summarily as you can. Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, I think it's still very concerning, especially the uh, public perception about the uh, umpire, the institution that is supposed to manage our elections. But I think building from uh, July to this moment, there has been some effort, some attempt by the commission to engage the public. I know at the national level, there have been uh, uh, layers of meetings with uh, different levels of stakeholders. Commission had, I know they organized this quarterly meeting with political parties, with election observers, with the security. That had happened at some point. I was also at a public forum where the commission, uh, I mean, the public lecture series that have also often been organized by the Electoral Institute, another arm of the commission, to provide this public enlightenment about what the commission was doing. And uh, I mean, thankfully, that public uh, enlightenment series was also about preparing uh, the people, uh, the mind of stakeholders ahead of the Koji, Bayasa, and Imo election. But then, having said that, uh, building on to the election, what the commission had done first is to uh, uh, try to provide the opportunity for Nigerians to be able to participate in the process. One, by returning back to begin to distribute, uh, to uh, do a collection of permanent voters' card. That started uh, from the 9th of September and uh, was expected to go on until the 10th or the 11th of October. Hopefully also that uh, that will provide the opportunity for the teaming voters in those states to be able to collect their voters card and be able to participate. Although there was an expectation that the commission will have opened up the, uh, the the chance for people to go back and re-register, especially those that were not able to register during the last uh, registration exercise. But that didn't happen for the Imo, Koji, and Bayasa upcoming elections. So uh, sadly, those um, voters in those categories, that those will be voters in those categories, may miss the chance to participate in this election. But for the coming election, what are the expectations? First, um, for the different stakeholders, what to expect is that there have been a review in the polling, state, polling units in, in these three states. Koji will have 3,509 polling units. Imo will have about 4,700 there about polling units, and also by us 2,280 something polling units. This, are, this is, there, there have been some increment over what we used to have in the last election that was conducted in those states. And some of these polling units were uh, what we used to have in the past as voting points that were upgraded to polling units. The challenge we saw in the presidential election was that INEC did what they call voter allocation to polling units. They moved some voters to these new polling units. I bet that there was a challenge of communication to some extent. Some voters did not even know that they were reallocated to polling units. So we expect that 
there will be public communication or more public enlightenment from the commission to tell voters where to go, how to go about identifying their polling needs and how to vote on election day. But for the purpose of public enlightenment, these elections will happen on November 11th, like you rightly said, and it will happen across all of those polling needs. The expectation is that the voting uh, centers will open at 8.30 in the morning and will remain open until 2.30 in the afternoon or when the last person on the queue had voted. It doesn't mean that... Uh, hello, Paul. For, uh, the moment uh, it is uh, hello, Paul. I can hear you. Uh, yeah. Be before you get to the polling, uh, polling day itself, I think it is imperative to be a bit more chronologically uh, to sequence it better because uh, I met today said only 55% of uh, political party agents, parties, uh, the agents of the political party, polling uh, agents of the political parties, only 55% of their names have been uploaded. Uh, we must also let the parties know that this role is as strategic as the role of INEC because it is actually the role that best captures the methodology of accountability. That is one. Two, INEC is stating that. Yeah, I agree with you. This is very concerning, but again. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, it is very concerning that. Um, up to this moment, we are still having concerns about political party agents not uh, political parties not registering their agents for the election. But to also point that um, one, I think there might be a problem with capacity here because I recall the last time they had raised. I was at the, uh, as a stakeholder meeting with the commission where some of them raised concerns around how to even use the application for. The, up, the, the upload of the party agent, but I, I also wouldn't want to make excuses for them because I think if they apply themselves to knowing how to do that, perhaps they may get help to, uh, on, on how to go about it. But again, to point that it could also be uh, a factor of the 11th hour syndrome as it's synonymous with most of us as Nigerians. People went on to the very last minute before they began uh, to uh, uh, the process. This is a process that started it Paul. started since August the 24th, and we barely have 24 hours until the end of the process, and we are here still grappling with the, uh, with the uh, upload of party agents. Now, to say that there are still other stakeholders in the process that are still yet, uh, that are yet to complete their registration as observers, you got, for instance, uh, media. Media accreditation will go on until the 22nd of this month as we speak. The election observers are yet to commence their accreditation. Perhaps it's to also appeal to the commission to uh, provide some leeway to political parties and perhaps provide some form of extension, even if it's to the end of the week, to see if that would encourage more parties to go and uh, Paul, register their agents for the process. Paul, if I, to I can be, hear you. If I were to be a registered voter, say in Kogi, Bayasa, or emo state, and I really want to participate in uh, by playing my civ by, by uh, observing my civic duty on election day, but I don't have a PVC permanent voter card. Uh, what should I be thinking about now, or what should I be doing? Is is there any opportunity for me to? to go to my nearest INEC facility to collect my PVC? Would you want to enlighten us on that? I am aware that, like I mentioned earlier, this process started since the 9th of September, and it will be on until the 10th of October. That is tomorrow. Again, there have been a lot of awareness. I was in the two states, at least. I was in Koji. I was also in Imo. And I can say that the stakeholders, especially the CSOs in those states, have It is important that they should collect because that is the guarantee they have for participating in the elections. And then on the part of the commission, there have been a lot of public awareness about the collection points. The commission offices were the collection points. And to a large extent also, we got the report that people have made use of those opportunities 
to go pick up their PBCs. At the moment, it may be too early to begin to mention figures or numbers until uh, we have the final figures from the commission before we'll be uh, able to say uh, realistically up until when, up, up, until when, up until when could an average voter uh, get to collect his or her PVC uh, in, those, in, in the states? That's what I'm saying. The process was just, the window was just one month by the commission between September 9th and October 10th. At the moment, we don't have uh, we don't have the reports of, of how many percentage of these voters have picked up their PVCs. But I know there were different collection points. Why? Where would be more concerning? I think is also local government in Imo State because of security concerns. The commission had to move the collection point from the local government headquarters to the state office. Um, in fact, as we speak, the INEC office in the local government has been temporarily shut down. They are currently operating at the headquarters in Owerri. Okay. So that is where the voters will get uh, to pick uh, up their Paul, PBC. Paul, I, I, I'm really very sorry. You, you know, it's getting more interesting. You are a very good educator. You know, maybe that's not the primary... A primary responsibility, but I must be honest with you, I find you very engaging uh, and a very good uh, uh, illustrator, uh, educator, but we really have to wrap it up at this juncture. Sorry about that. We will have much more opportunities before uh, the date rolls in. Thank you very much for guesting. We look forward to engaging you uh, another time. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All the best. Thank you. This is where we wrap it up for now. We're coming back for the next segment. Stay with us.